Hi, my name is Erica, and um, we're going to be making a ring today, a garnet ring. Um, you're going to need six to eight inches of copper square wire for your base wire. This is by Rio Grande. It's 20 gauge. Um, you're going to need... Two to three feet of 0 0.2 by 0 0.1 gauge half round wire and then uh, two two foot pieces of 30 30 gauge round wire to make this ring okay we're gonna start out with straightening the base wire. This is a uh, square copper wire. I'm going to cut about an arm's length ish <laughs> of half round copper wire. You're going to start almost midway. I give about two to three inches in. This is going to be a ring band. I'm going to wrap my half round wire around this twice. I'm going to cut this uh, tail. Bend the tail to where it goes into the middle of your base wires so that it doesn't touch the skin or your copper or your uh, steel wool because it can snag on your steel wool. You can also poke the skin so. If it snags on your steel wool, it can it can tear your weave up. Now I'm going to take my other base wire, make sure that it's in the right spot. And then I'm going to wrap my half round wire around both wires. Continue this for about two inches. It's according to it's really according to what size ring you want to make. Uh, but this one's going to be anywhere you can make it from from a seven and a half to an eight. It's going to be an adjustable band. Don't 
Now, I'm going to film this YouTube video with no edits. And if anyone has any questions at all, please feel free to ask. I don't mind answering them. Every once in a while, you need to push your push your weave together. I'm also going to give this anchor just a tiny squeeze and go up my ring band here. Give it just a little squeeze, just gently. I'm going to unravel this because my wire overlapped itself right there. Gently unravel it if that happens because your, your half round wire can get twisted. Don't forget to push, push your push your weave together there as you're going, so that you don't have any of your copper base wire or silver base wire, just whichever color you're using showing through or kind. I mean, just whichever kind. See how it overlaps sometimes? Pushing it together as you go also helps with it overlapping like that.
Sometimes half round wire will try to overlap, or I mean twist, and you have to either go down it with your fingernails, or use your nylon gel pliers. Once we get this ring band made, it will go a little faster and smoother. So I'm going to continue this for about another half inch. Keep pushing your wire together. Okay, now we're almost to the end. I'm going to um, anchor it off. Okay, in order to anchor it off, we need to split these two wires into V like this. And then pinch your wire so it's flat. While it's pinched, bring it through and then pull it through. And then push it where it's tight with the rest of the wires as tight as you can get it will do and we're gonna do this twice and I'm gonna cut it I want to 
want to cut it to where I have enough of a tail for it to go in between these these two wires. That way, whenever I oxidize it, the tail doesn't snag on my steel wool. And so that the tail doesn't touch the skin because this is a ring. You want to do that even with, with necklaces if you can. You know. Okay. Now I'm going to take... This is a 9 millimeter bead. These are hand cut and hand polished, hand drilled garnets. They have inclusions. They have cracks. Some of them do. They're natural stones. But I'm going to try and pick one that doesn't have many inclusions and any cracks. And one that's more of a deeper color of red. These are 9 millimeter by 3.6 millimeters thick. So I'm going to go with this one. Now, you can pick either side to do your, to put your bead on too. But I'm going to pick this one and I'm going to try and pick pick which uh, angle to put it because sometimes beads will, will, especially handmade beads, will have different angles on different sides. And this one I think will fit perfect just like this. Okay, now we have our bead on. I'm going to get my 30 gauge wire. You don't have to use you don't have to use 30 gauge. You can use 26 or 28 gauge. Just whichever gauge you feel comfortable with. But I I like using 30 gauge. And now keep in mind if you use 30 gauge, say you were going to put 10 weaves or 10 stitches, 10 loops, right? You would have to put 20 because there's the it's so small. So you'd have to add more, more of a weave on to your base wire. Therefore giving it more detail. Thick wire also gives more detail because it's more prominent, you know. Either way is beautiful. So I'm going to I'm going to start my anchor here, but I'm not going to squeeze it in place just yet. I have to remove the tail first. And again, remove it with just enough left over so that you can squeeze it in between in between these two wires to keep it from snagging on steel wool and poking your skin, you know. this on the, all the way down this bottom wire here and I'm going to start pushing it up under my bead this is going to help hold your bead in place
Now, you want to make sure your bead is on the right side first. Push it as far up under there as it'll go so that it looks like a continuation from this, from your band. <laughs> 